and you can't go around it and you can't go under it sometimes you gotta go over it my name is Troy and welcome to facility D20 in today's video we're gonna look at building a cobblestone bridge So for this project I used some DAS air dry clay and a piece of foam board. I just used a couple of household items to trace it the basic shape of an arc. There's a trash can lid and then a pizza stone. Just, have what, just use what I had lying around. Once it was cut out I used my X-Acto knife to just cut out the basic shape. I didn't have to be real neat here. And then use that side to make a template for the other side. Once that was done, I just cut out a rectangle to use as the walkway. I didn't really pay much attention to scale. I just kind of built it by eye here for a bit of fun. I wanted to try to do this project fairly quickly. Made a couple of marks on it just to keep it symmetrical. And then in order to um, get the walkway to bend the curve, I just traced a few marks on it and cut a few slots in it. That way I could just um, easily bend this bridge to, to fit. So you can see here I just kind of bend it in place. And then a little bit of hot glue just started to uh, glue this whole entire structure together. And the nice thing about hot glue for something like this is it dries super fast. Hey, so this is it. That's the structure made. It's time to go ahead and get some clay on this bad boy and see how it turns out. Hoping that rubble pattern is going to bring this to life. So this project turned into a little bit of a family event as everybody was excited to try this air dry clay. So I brought it inside and uh, started to play with it. You can see there I didn't have a roller so I just used a big can of hairspray to roll it flat. Um, my sons and my wife were at the table with me too, working away on little projects. And then I used this 3D printed clay roller to do the cobblestone pattern. This is a great little uh, tool. I'll link the link to Thingiverse in the description. And the first thing I did was try to cut out the pathway. When you're working with this uh, clay, you want to go maybe about a quarter inch thick to allow you some... Um, room to put that imprint in there. Then I just used some Elmer's glue and glued the walkway into place. Because this air dry clay won't stick on its own, so uh, you need a bit of glue to keep it in place for when it dries. I just trimmed off the excess and uh, patted everything gently down in place as not to ruin the pattern. So this is what we got so far, looks pretty good. Cobblestone patterns coming out. What do you think, Jenna? Cool. Happy yeah. Jim. <laughs> See ya. So it was at that point that my wife decided uh, she had enough of the project and had to move on. Hopefully in the future I can convince her to join me for a few videos. Then I just continued on applying glue and cutting the pattern to fit each side of this bridge. If I had my time back here, I probably would have made this piece a little bigger and wrapped it around the inside. Instead I uh, used the piece on the outside and the inside. And I just trimmed it to fit and tucked it around the foam core. I'm not too worried about the bottom of the bridge as you're never really going to see it so I just didn't bother to coat the bottom of it in any clay. Yep, that, that roller really works really well. I was pretty happy with it. Then I did the inside piece here. Trimming off the excess and then I just kind of um, blend it to two pieces together on top with my finger. That's it, it was all done. Took me about uh, 45 minutes. We're back out in the facility, it's been 24 hours. This thing is drying up quite nicely. You can see here I have a little bit of a problem. 
My roll was a little too thin, but I'm gonna fill it in with some glue and some sand to make it look like a little bit of rubble. Get some paint on this thing, draw or brush it off, and it should really bring this to life. Let's get to it. So here I just grabbed some white glue and my old paintbrush and spread the glue around a bit and decided to sprinkle in some sand in there to try and fill those cracks. Just dumped off the excess and then uh, waited for it to dry. Once it was dry, I decided to base coat it all in uh, black. I just used cheap acrylic paints here that you would find anywhere, any craft store. Painted the underside first in black just to kind of hide it and looked at some pictures of bridges for inspiration of how I wanted to paint this thing. And decided I was gonna go with um, a few different types of gray. This is it, I went with three shades of gray and worked my way up from the darkest to the lightest. Uh, I first started out by doing a, what I call an overbrush, it's like a dry brush except uh, you use an excess paint. And it was still a bit too dark between the cracks so I just started uh, watering down my paintbrush and just filling in those cracks. Not 100% but probably about 90% just to add some uh, depth of color. And then I give the bottom a quick uh, overbrush in gray as well. You can see here how I'm kind of um, making sure the paint gets down into those cracks in a lot of places. Once that dry, it was time to work up my next color. Here I've done more of a traditional um, dry brush. It's still a bit of an overbrush, what I like to call an overbrush, where there's still a lot of paint on the brush. And this was to really lay down this um, first color of gray heavily onto the cobblestone. So I enjoy making terrain, it's, uh, it's a nice change of pace for miniatures, you don't have to be as careful or as time consuming, you can just kind of go at it quickly. Of course then it was time for the third and final coat of grey, and this is much more of a traditional airbrush where I just lightly, lightly brushed it on just to pick up the high spots of the cobblestone. Made sure to do on the inside, the outside, and you can see already the color is really starting to pop here. But with these acrylic paints, I find they dry very matte. I'm never really happy with the finish of them, so I decided to hit this whole thing with some Citadel Knoll Oil and try to blend in those colors a little better, a little more contrast. And I think that it really, really helped bring these cobblestones together in a way that uh, the paints alone just wasn't cutting it. And then I decided to uh, put some glue on the sides and apply some flock as if there was like a vegetation or a moss growing up the side, just to try to break up that monotone color. Let's add a few little details to it. I wanted this to be a quick little terrain build, so if I were to do like a diorama or a showpiece, I probably would have went in and individually painted a lot of these cobblestones for a variety of different colors. But hey, this is supposed to be fast and easy, so that's what I decided to stick to. Once that was done, I just decided to take some um, deviled in mud wash and just get all over those rubble and gravel sections that I glued on. Just try to dirty them up and make them look more like soil. And then of course I applied a little bit of glue and I made sure to get in down in those cracks that didn't quite fill in and apply some static grass. And then a couple of tufts from Army Painter, Grass Tufts. And then to finish the whole thing off, I decided to hit it with a satin varnish, just to seal everything in, to stick that flock there. And as you can see, as the airbrush hits these rocks and the color changes, the satin varnish really helped to bring out the contrast in this piece, and it gave it that finished, smoothed it over stone look. And it added a lot, so I'm happy that I did this step. A little bit more flock in a couple of places that I missed where there were cracks showing. And that pretty much summed it up. 
this is a simple project you can do. You can use this technique to build a castle, a road, a cabin, rubble. So some clay and a clay roller really uh, went a long way here. I'll be making a few more of these in the future. So guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe. It's, uh, it means a lot to us small YouTubers to take that extra second and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us um, show the world what we do, and I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.